Good morning, everybody. It's Friday. Looking forward to an absolutely awesome weekend. Welcome back to Florida Sport Fishing TV Plus. I'm Captain Mike. I'm going to be your instructor here this morning. Uh, what we're going to talk about today is planer fishing. You know, spring season is here, summer's right around the corner, and planer fishing across South Florida is just an absolutely awesome tactic especially if you're looking for the kingfish and the wahoo i mean remember you got these air temperatures that are 90 degrees 100 degrees and that surface is really going to be super super warm so these pelagic predators are going to be hunting deeper in the water column where it's darker where it's cooler where there's more bait so we've got to be able to present baits below the surface and perhaps there's no better way to do that than with a planer okay it's an absolute staple across really not only south florida but up and down the eastern seaboard you know really all over the world guys are fishing planers but certainly fort lauderdale miami you know palm beach even in the keys here you know planer fishing is just super super effective but it's come a very long way in recent years and we're doing things differently now than we used to do them um, a lot has changed, you know, a lot has evolved. And while you may have watched some videos and seminars from the past, I want to talk to you about how we're doing things now. And please understand, we've got a full-blown two-hour seminar on planers and strip baits that's coming up. It's going to be posted probably within 10 days or so. So, you know, stand by for that. But in summary, I wanted to get some some initial information over to you you know really immediately and keep in mind i don't care you know you could be fishing strip baits with sea witches you know something like this which again the seminar is going to get into in detail the full-blown seminar you could be fishing rigged ballyhoo uh, spoons you know a variety of artificial lures off of the planers but there are some fundamentals that remain the same across the board. How we're rigging, how we're rigging our planers nowadays, how we're fishing the planers, and those are the things that I really want to drill into your head. For those of you that are just getting started, understand what a planer does. It swims in the water in this fashion. Obviously, that weight keeps it in this direction. You're dragging it through the water, okay? Dragging it just like this. Um, and then when you get a, you know, and this forward swivel, by the way, is connected to your running line right to your rod. And this back end is connected to a hundred foot leader way, way back there with your bait. Okay. And this is in the middle of the two. And once you get a bite, boom, it straightens out just like that. And you can reel that planer back to the boat. It trips. That's what that's called. It trips, fully trips. Now, back in the day, the way that we were rigging these was right in line, meaning that we would take a snap swivel from the rod itself right to the planer, and then right off the back of the planer would be a long 100-foot leader to your bait, way back there. Problem with that is, once you retrieve this planer, you obviously can't reel this through your rod guides, so you literally have to stop reeling and hand line the fish hand over hand for a hundred feet a lot of problems with that it's dangerous you could lose fish you know it's just not as sporty as fighting the fish right off the rod tip so we came up with a better way and that's with a removable planer and that's really what i want to talk to you about here today is how we rig these removable planers you know, call it whatever you'd like, a wind-on planer system. Uh, you know, I don't care what you call it, but the bottom line in plain English is you remove this. So now you can reel that fish all the way in right through the guides, or I should say right, you know, reel the entire system through the guides and fight the fish right to the rod tip, making it a lot easier, a lot more fun, a lot more effective, a lot more sporty, and a lot safer. Okay, so how do we do that? So let's kind of start right at the rig itself. This is, of course, where we're going to have our strip bait. May it be a bonita strip, a mullet strip, uh, whatever it may be, or an artificial lure or a ballyhoo. And then we have a long leader. This could be 50 pounds, 60 pounds, even 80 pounds, nothing more than that. We don't fish wire. We fish straight mono by using a long shank hook like this. 
sometimes even a double hook system that prevents you from getting cut off for the most part. Every now and then you are gonna get cut off, but you're gonna get a lot more bites fishing the mono than you would fishing wire. And every time after every fish, just feel it. If it's chafed, cut a piece off, retie it. Bottom line, we've got a long 100 foot leader, okay? Now, just for the sake of display purposes, I've shortened this leader and I'm just gonna pull out about 20 feet because that's all it is just to make it easier here. So I'm gonna pull this through my guides. And just bear with me. Okay, come on now. Let's get that. There we go. And again, we're gonna talk a lot more in detail about the planar rods and the reels that we're fishing and the line and drag settings and setting the planer and all of the different fundamentals that come along with planer fishing in our full-blown planer seminar. Uh, but for now, I really wanna focus on the removable planer system. So at the end of our leader, again, this is going right here. This is 100 feet long, right to our bait or whatever offering we have. And then we tie that leader to a very small, what we call a heavy swivel. Some people call it like an Australian swivel or I don't care, a hot dog swivel. It just looks like a little tube, right? It's not your typical barrel swivel. It's just, you know, really streamlined, but super, super strong. I'm going to kind of hold that up against my thumb. Hopefully you'll get a better view of that right there. It's got relatively large holes, which is important. You're going to find out why in a moment, um, but it's a small swivel, but very strong. This one's rated for 250 pound test. You don't want to go any smaller because you need those holes to be that size right there. Okay. So you don't necessarily need a 250 pound class swivel, but you need that spacing in those holes. So once you tie on that swivel, you're then going to tie on approximately 20 inches, 24 inches, okay, of heavy mono, of heavy braid, could be up to 200 pound test, don't go any lighter than 100 pound, so somewhere between 100 and 200 pound on that trip line, we'll call it, I don't care what, the jumper line, the jump line, some people call it. Okay, and then there's another swivel, the exact same swivel right there tied on the other end. So there's one on each end of that line. And then the opposite end of that is 65 pound braid that goes right to my reel. So working now from the reel, 65 pound braid to the swivel right there, a 24 inch jumper or lead line, again, whatever you wanna call that, there it is right there another swivel, and then that goes to the leader. Now understand that we wind this. It's a wind-on system. It goes right through the guides all the way on to the reel. So once we're fighting a fish, we literally could reel this right through the guides. So it's important that your planer rod not have small little roller guides. It's gotta be built specifically for planer fishing, um, and it's gotta have the right guides. That's of course vital for this system to work, okay? Next thing is the planer itself. Now you'll notice this is your typical planer. They're available in everything from a number two to a 32 ounce size, okay? Really large variation of different size planers. This is a number eight, right? average. This is what we fish. We, we generally fish two planers, a number four and a number eight. They're both rigged exactly the same way. The front of the planer, okay, has a ring that's attached, a solid welded ring that's on the planer itself. There it is right there. Then we put a large split ring, okay? And then we put a 300 pound ball bearing snap swivel, but we cut the end of the swivel off. See how we just cut with a pair of cable cutters, wire cutters, we cut the end of that off. So you just have this hook system, we'll call it. There it is right there. It doesn't open and close any longer. It's very stiff, very sturdy, okay? And it's just a hook. There it is. Now on the back end, we do essentially the same thing, just a hook. We attach it with another smaller swivel in this case, right to the plate, but essentially it ends exactly the same way with another 300 pound snap swivel 
cut off where it's just the hook right there. Now, once we let our bait out 100 feet behind the boat, it's now time to carefully attach our planer. We will take the front of the planer right here with that little hook, and we're gonna put it in the hole of that swivel. We're gonna take the back of the planer, okay, the side that's leading toward the bait, and we're going to put it in the hole of the back swivel. So now as we are trolling, we'll try and do this so we get a better look at it. Now that we're trolling, our planer is dragging through the water just like this, the way it normally would. When it trips, boom, it goes straight right there. And you can see that tag line, the lead line, the jumper line, whatever you want to call it underneath. You see how that has a little bit of slack. You absolutely need that. If you don't have that slack, the planer will not trip all of the way. So sizing is vital here. Again, look at that, boom, and then it trips. This is in the swimming position where it's tracking. You get a bite, you get a fish on, and right there, it trips and it's straight with no stress whatsoever. Now, as we are fighting that fish and that planer reaches, the bow reaches the rod tip and it breaks the surface and ultimately reaches the rod tip, we simply remove it. We slide it off those little hooks. See, it's right in there. I'm gonna show it to you a little bit closer. It's right in that swivel right there. We just, boop, remove it. The planer is now completely free. It's no longer attached to our system. And we simply pick up the rod and fight the fish. Get that clicker off. And boom, look at that. All the way through the rod tips and fight the fish right there. All the way right to the rod tip where we could easily gaff that fish. Super safe super effective, simple, okay, but real important that it's all rigged properly. And make sure that you check your rigging often because these little sharp ends will often fray the knot that's connected to the swivel. So you have to check it often. You have to stay on top of it. Don't fish it for dozens of trips and think that it's not going to fail because it will fail. So you've got to stay on top of it. So like I said, Keep your eyes out for the full-blown two-hour seminar on planers and strip baits. It was filmed live. Um, it's coming up, like I said, in about 10 days or so, and it's going to talk about everything. Rods, reels, lines, rigging baits, setting the spread, drag settings, uh, flat lines when you're planer fishing as well, where to planer fish, what depths, what species are you targeting, all of that good stuff. But initially, I wanted to plant the seed with that wind-on system. I really want to drill that into your head because that's an absolute game changer when it comes to South Florida planer fishing.